In this video, I will guide you through the process of creating an AI custom support agent for an e-commerce store. This agent will be tailored for e-commerce stores to process refunds and handle order questions automatically. The benefits of automating these calls include offering 24-7 customer support, being able to scale effortlessly during peak seasons by managing high volume of inquiries without having to hire any additional staff and improving customer support experience by delivering consistent, accurate, and fast responses to their questions. By using Retail's new conversational AI builder, we will have control of the agent on every step of the conversation, letting us build much more complex agents. I will guide you step by step on how to build this specific use case for these agents. So by the end of this video, you should be able to implement this by yourself. Now let's jump right into it. Hello, this is Customer Support Department. How can I help you today? I want to ask for a refund. I can assist you with that. Could you please let me know the reason for your refund request? Inside of Retail AI, we're going to go ahead and create an agent. For this specific build, I am going to use the Conversation Flow agent feature inside of Retail, which is currently in beta. You have the option here to pick one of the templates that is already built. But in this case, I'm going to start from blank just to show you how all of this works. This is the blank canvas inside of Retail where we can essentially build the pathway of the agent and make it do essentially what we want it to do in every step of the way. So here on the main dashboard, let's say, let's call it, you have on the right side, you can see here the global settings of the agent. This is what we have been able to tune up until this point in retail. There's no changes in here, just the way you want to tune it. You can tune it here by using these settings. Now you can also test it. You already know that in retail AI, you can use audio or you can test it via chat, which comes in very handy when you're trying to do uh, run tests multiple times. Now on the left side of your screen, you should find the notes that we can add to the canvas. So we have five different types of notes. Most of the time we will be using the conversation note, but we are also gonna use the function note and the, and the call transfer note. Now for this specific build, we will be building a customer support agent for uh, an e-commerce store. In this case, I want to take care of two specific intents from the user. So the first one is the user wants to make a refund and the other one is that the user wants to know the status of his order. So for that, we have this welcome note at the beginning. Uh, if I click here, you can see here that I can set it to be an static sentence. So the, the agent is always going to mention this when talking to the customer or you can prompt it to do a certain thing. So for the beginning and for the first sentence, I always want it to be this a specific sentence so there is no problem here now on the bottom side of this node you can find the transition conditions essentially uh, these are the conditions that need to be met uh, in order to advance to another node in this case i am just gonna erase both of this because i am gonna set uh, global nodes inside the conversation and i'm gonna explain to you what i mean by this just in a second but for now you can also add transitions you need to know that uh just by clicking bottom here you can add new transitions and you just have to describe the transition condition inside here and the AI will know what to do of course you can always uh, fine-tune the agent by adding examples on how it needs to behave regarding the transition or the conversation itself you can also in every single node choose a different LLM for that specific node block interruptions from the user while the AI is speaking uh, set it to be a global node as I mentioned before and also skip response from the user and just jump right into the other node. So as I mentioned, I am going to add a new conversation node, essentially two new conversation nodes. So the first one, I'm just going to use the prompt uh, tab and I'm going to prompt it. So it asks the user the reason for the refund. Here, I'm just going to set two transitions, two conditions for transitioning to another node. The first one is going to be if the refund is reasonable. And the second one is going to be if the refund is not reasonable. So I'm just going to add a new one. I'm going to copy this, paste it. So essentially we have two pathways now from this only node. For the one that is not reasonable, I am just going to add a new node. I'm going to connect it. And then I'm just going to tell the user that uh, we need to get involved as a supervisor in order to check their refund request. And I'm going to then transfer the call to a supervisor. Important part here is that you want to set this uh, click inside the node and set this to skip response so it doesn't wait for the user response. So this sets the transition condition to skip response and I'm just gonna add a new node as a call transfer 
and just transfer the call to a static number here. You can also set it to be a dynamic variable, but for this case, I'm just gonna type here the number that it needs to transfer the call to, and it will be transferred. Also, I forgot to mention that for this initial two intents, I need to set these nodes as global nodes and then describe the condition that it needs to be met to jump to this node. So here for the refund one, I'm just gonna say that the user needs to initiate a refund of a purchase. And for the other intent, I am just gonna prompt it so it asks for the order ID. As I said, also I need to set it to a global node and the condition to jump to this node will be that the user needs to initiate a check of order status. So that's it for now. Now let's continue with the transfer call function here. The transfer call node has two different types of settings, I would say. So the first one is a call transfer. So it passes the call to an agent without a debrief. And a warm transfer is when the AI provides a debrief to the next agent after transferring the call. In this case, I just want to do a call transfer and uh, I want to set a, a static number here and that's it. Also for this transfer call node, I want to set it as a global node as well because sometimes people get angry when they try, when they identify that they are talking to an AI or a robot. So if that happens, I want the user to be able to transfer the call to a human or the supervisor. So that's the condition I'm going to put here in the global node description. Oh, and by the way, the, this whole agent is going to use the settings that we set here in global settings, unless we specify it differently in every node. So for example, we are specifying that we want to use GPT-40 for the whole agent as an LLM model, but we can change it in every node. So we kind of have the control of what is being used in every node. And we can also reduce usage cost for some nodes that don't require as much processing as other nodes. Now for the other case in which the refund is reasonable, I want to process that refund on the back end using a custom function and then let the user know that we had processed the refund and then end the call. So to do that, first I need to add a new conversation note and ask the user for the order ID. So I'm able to identify it and process the refund. So here in this conversation note, I added this prompt for the agent to ask the user for the order ID and then the transition condition is gonna be that the order ID has been obtained. So now we have to process that refund by calling a custom function. So let's add a new function node. Here I added already two different functions, but in your case, you're gonna have to add a new custom function because there is no built-in functions for this. So the refund, I'm gonna pick the refund one because I already built it. So this refund order function is not really doing anything in the background. For your real case scenario, of course, you're gonna have to build this so it actually refunds the order. But in this case, I'm just using the example that retail AI gives us. So here, the way you set up the custom function, you have to specify a name, a description, the URL, which is essentially the webhook that you will use in Make or any other automation platform. You can also enter an API timeout, which is optional, but it is just a fallback just in case the agent doesn't receive a response from the API. So it cuts the communication there. And here you have to specify the schema. In this case, I am just passing the order ID that I received from the user and the output should be just successful or something for the agent to be able to continue with this path. So in your case, you're just gonna be able to save it and that's it. But in my case, I am just gonna use this here. Now the transition conditions that I'm gonna set for this node are two different conditions. So the first one is gonna be that the refund was successful. And the other one is just gonna be a fallback condition just to take care of the scenarios in which the refund wasn't successful because we have to handle these scenarios as well. Now, if the refund was not successful, I want to tell that to the user and acknowledge the problem and also tell him that we are going to pass the call to a supervisor so he can handle that case. And for that, I am going to use a conversation note just to tell the user that the refund wasn't successful. And then I am going to connect that to the transfer call note that is right below here. And in the case the refund was successful, I want to just say that the refund was successful, ask the user if he needs help with any other thing, and if not, just end the call right away. So that is what I did. I added a new conversation note. I prompted so it tells the user that we have already refunded their money and ask him if he need any additional help. If not, we're just going to politely say goodbye and then skip the response because we don't want a response to the conversation and then end the call right away with the ending note. The idea here is that if the user says that he needs any additional help, the agent should be able to identify that and 
jump right to this node in case the user says something like I need to track my order or something like that. So without having to connect this specifically to this node, if the user here says that he needs to track an order or just want information regarding his order, the agent is going to be able to identify that and jump right to that node. There's one more thing here on this refund path and is taking care of the cases in which the transfer call fails. So in this case, I just want to tell the user that the transfer call failed and that we will get back to him in the future. So I added a new conversation note, I prompted that way and here I also want to skip the response from the user. And after this, just end the call. Now we have to also build the other intent that I mentioned at the beginning or the other path. So now in this path, I am going to ask the user for the order ID and then retrieve that data from our system just using a function call to do things on the background and retrieve the data from the order that the user specified and then answer questions regarding that order for the user. So here, if the order ID was obtained, I'm going to add a function node, which is going to be check order. I already add one. But if you can see here, I am also using test data or just an example. I named it check order. I gave it a description. I'm using this URL, which is an example from retail. And this is my JSON schema. So I'm passing the order ID, which is required. And I am receiving back the whole information for that order. So I'm just going to use that for my function calling and connect it to my transition condition. Now, once I get my order details, which is going to be the transition condition for our next node. I'm going to tell the user the details for that order and also ask him if he has any questions regarding this order that I can address. And for that, I am going to use a conversation node as well. Again, I'm going to prompt it from the agent and connect it to our past node. Now, if the user has no further questions, I'm just going to politely say goodbye as well. So I already have a note here that does that. So I'm going to connect it. And this node is also connected to the end call function or node and that's it. So it's time to test our agent and see how it works. But right before we test it, I forgot to mention that we have the global settings and we have to also tune this. In this case, I am just going to add an, a very small prompt, which just tells the agent the limitations and what she needs to do. So I am just telling her that she needs to check their order or and process a refund and those are the tasks that she can do not any other tasks and also to do her best or its best to guess and understand uh, what the user is saying there's nothing else that i touched i didn't include a knowledge base but of course you can do that the speech settings i use the default ones but then i strongly suggest that you take a look into these ones and really fine tune what you need and I don't need any post call analysis or security settings uh, for this build. Now jumping right into the testing phase, we know that retail allows us to test the agent via audio by calling the agent or just chatting with the agent. Now here I can also set in which node I want the agent to begin in. So I'm just going to start the conversation right at the beginning. So I am just going to say hi and let's see what happens. Now you can see here that on our conversational pathway, the node in which the agent is at the moment is being highlighted with a, a blue dots. So the agent is right here right now and it is just saying the aesthetic sentence that it put as a welcome node. So it is saying that, uh, yeah, well, hello, this is customer support department. How can I help you today? I want to go to this path. So I'm going to just say that I want to refund. Yeah, this lights up. And I'm just going to say that the item was broken. This should be a reasonable ask and uh, essentially indeed it is. So we go down this path. Now it is asking my ID. Of course, as this is a made up function, I don't know if it is going to actually process the order and say that it refunded my money with, with all this made up information, but let's test it. So I'm going to say that my order ID is one, two, three, four, five. And it seems like, yeah, of course, there were some technical, well, let's see. So the evocation of the tool, okay, the order ID was set to 12345 successfully, but the tool result was an error because there is no 12345. So it went down this path in which the refund was not successful. 
so uh, it just mentioned that there were some technical issues and it tried to transfer the call to a representative and you can see here that the call transfer was successful so you see here that two result was transferred successfully so in our made up scenario the user was transferred to this phone and is now talking to our supervisor but let's also test the other case in which the user just wants to know the status of their order so let's just go and test that scenario so we are currently on the welcome note as well so let's say hi again it is gonna say the static message i want to say that i want to details on my order and it should go it jumped right here so now it is asking for the order id again let's just put one two three four five again six and let's see if uh it says that uh that is something in this case it said that um yeah effectively there is an order with uh for a guy named john and that the price was four thousand dollars so it is telling me now here that it pulled up the information for my order and that it is under the name John and the total price is 4000 So that is the made up information for this order, order and it is telling me that. It is also asking me if I have any other specific questions. I'm just going to say no. And if I say no and I don't say anything else, it is going to say goodbye and just end the call. But in this case, let me try to um jump right to the transfer call because you can see here that i set it up so it is a global node in case the um i think it is in case the user is angry or something or, or says that it wants to talk to a supervisor so let's just do that and you see that when i said that no i want to talk to a supervisor it jumped right to this transfer call function and it transfers successfully my call to the supervisor, which is good. So that's it. It seems like our agent works just fine. Of course, this is a very small use case, but using these, you can actually build very, very, very specific things and very complex scenarios. But I hope you understood what the basics are here. It is not very difficult. You just have to have everything mapped out in your brain in order to put it here and in order for it to work but the nodes and the functions it is something that we are already used to of course you, if you have any question uh, you can drop it in the comments in the comment section below and i will be happy to address any of those finally if you are a business owner and have been wanting to implement one of these solutions for your business feel free to schedule a quick call with me using the link on the description below and i will be happy to help you hope you enjoyed and see you soon